Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to what's going to be part four, one, two, three, four, part four of the stool project. So, I'm actually going to get to some welding in this video, but before I do, I'd just like to say thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, it's great to have you on board, and uh, current subscribers, and everyone that comments uh, and gives me uh, amazing feedback and words of encouragement. So thank you so very much. What I am going to do in this video now is just have a little chat about safety. So I'm going to pick the camera up and just show you a couple of things that are very important uh, and I'll just discuss uh, some PPE uh, and uh, then we'll be able to get on and get, uh, get some welding done. So give us a second. Okay, everybody, so here we are. Now, as with a lot of stuff in the workshop, there are inherent dangers. So these are just some of the things that I will be using and some of the things I have got at hand just in case uh, during welding. So uh, what I've, got, I've got some air defenders here. So when you're grinding, uh, air defenders are very useful because they do tend to squeal a bit. Uh, uh, so obviously you don't want your hearing damaged or impaired through prolonged grinder use so air defenders there a selection of uh, welding gloves here some thicker ones uh, and I've got some thinner ones I purchased them I think they are TIG gloves but I prefer the feedback that they give because they're more sensitive uh, so that's good good long gauntlet style gloves uh, an extinguisher uh, at hand just in case uh, anything does happen to catch fire so always know where your fire extinguisher is uh, and know how to use it uh, a good quality welding mask I've just upgraded mine that first one that I bought when I got the welder not a good one really it's I don't know what it was about it but uh, it wasn't long enough and my chin and neck felt exposed and I did have a couple of uh, sparks hit my neck so I've upgraded to a better mask which is longer and it's it's uh, it's more comfortable the other one was causing me to have uh, sort of like uh, headaches and things like that so that was a bit off putting so uh, good quality mask I wouldn't recommend the goggles otherwise you'll end up with uh, a burnt face possibly uh, I've got a nice thick this is a wood turning smock but it's good quality cotton it's nice and thick and long sleeves uh, protect your arms and a first aid kit which has got everything in there it's a comprehensive kit and it also has eye wash uh, vials in it uh, in case you happen to get anything in your eyes in your eyes but you shouldn't because you should always be wearing goggles or masks or face shields so that's that's really it Obviously, I want everybody to have the confidence to give anything and everything a try that they they want to, but uh, there's there's also uh, room for keeping safe in the workshop, and obviously safety is down to you. What you do in your own workshop is completely down to you. These are just some uh, informal recommendations and what I use. So, with that being said, get out there, get some confidence. Have a play around and uh, and make stuff. So that's it for the uh, safety uh, blurb. So let's crack on. Okay, everybody. So I've got my first two pieces of steel <coughs> butted up to each other using a welder's magnet, uh, and this this welding table has got a bolt on to act as a ground clamp. So that's all good to go. So I'm just going to feel. Feel for my gloves. So I found my gloves. So all it needs is obviously just a attack or being well just to hold in place. Let's just, let's just feel for where I need to be. So 
So that should protect him. No, it's not. I missed. Ah. Try again. I think I got that. I'm telling you, this welding, it's great fun and I love the challenge, but it is a lot harder than you think. Uh, but that's that's also good, I'm liking that, but it is, whoa. Hats off to you master welders and fabricators out there. Okay folks, well, she's stuck together, <laughs> but it don't feel pretty. Anyway, uh, so I'm ready now. I've got it just uh, clamped in an upright position, so I can just feel for where the end of these tubes are here. Uh, and I can get some, uh, let's give it a spray with this anti-spatter stuff. And hopefully, to get in uh, some there on the ends okay everybody so I'm sure as you can see these welds are nothing short of laughable but it's stuck together. Just flip it over there. And I just I can't obviously I can't describe to you guys how difficult it is to weld with no eyesight just by touch. But uh, I don't know if you can try to get my bearings here now. Uh, bearings again so I'm as as always I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, the process and uh, the the little rhyme that I hear so many <laughs> say uh, welding and paint will make me the oh no grinding and paint will make me the welder I ain't so I can't even get that right today so anywho, so I'm going to uh, grind this down now uh, and feel what it's like and see if I've got to fill any gaps and things. So uh, I'll, I'll get some grinding done. Okay everybody, so here it is all ground up now and it's feeling very shoddy. But uh, just to share all my flaws and mistakes with you, I can feel a little hole there so I'll just have to get a bit in there to plug that up uh, need a bit more grinding on there and then just flip it round and feel around and then inside the the corners needs let's just get my bearings string uh, in here needs a bit more work grinding away but we have we have a square stuck together so I mean for me I'm massively chuffed with it don't get me wrong uh, and uh, it's it's a step nearer to getting a slightly bit better uh, so hopefully the second square that I weld up will be 
uh, an improvement on this one as I'm getting my head dialed in. I think with all these I, I wasn't getting down close enough with the tip of the gun. Uh, and yeah, it's just, just getting my head programmed. So anyway, we'll be carrying on. Uh, never giving up. Remember that. Never give up. Okay, everybody. So this is the second square welded up. Again, pretty poor. Let me get my bearings there. Pretty poor. Uh, but stuck together. I think they're marginally better than the first square. I'll just feel around here now. And then you've got obviously the just hold the camera steady as you can. You've got the internal corners. So I'm gonna get those ground down now. Uh, I suppose grinding's the metal working equivalent of sanding, so uh, I'll turn the camera off and give these a grind then we can have another look at it. Okay everybody I've got the 36 grit uh, flat disc wheel on the grinder now so I'm going to give these some heavy duty sanding all around because uh, it'll just make it easier uh, when it's all when I've got the main legs <coughs> tacked onto it as well so we'll get going with that. Okay, I've moved inside now because the weather's gone a bit rubbish. So what I've got is a rotary tool with a, a stone on the end, a grinding stone. So I'm just going to tighten a bit more the, uh, the internal uh, angles on these, on these squares. So we'll get to that. Okay, so I've been grinding those internal angles now. Uh, and the way that this is going to go together is, let me just have a feel here. There is one that's worse than the other. Nicola spotted a bit of tube. Yesterday, I'm just trying to feel for it. Easy said than done. There was a bit of tube. Go back to this one. A bit of tube. There it is. A bit of tube where I've blown out. So that's going to be the top. And then that's going to get welded like so. This is going to be flush with the top there though. Let's get another one.
like so. Just make sure it's lined up. So it's going to be like that, and then obviously the the other two will be welded up there, and that will be the main leg and bracing. And then I've got the four little metal tabs that I'm going to weld to this top hoop, uh, and they will have holes drilled in them for attaching to the base of the stool, the the, the seat rather. So that's that's the way it's going to be cobbled together. So that's all pretty cool. So what we need to do now is. Uh, Get ready for some more welding, and, well tacking into place and making sure everything's nice and square uh, and we're good to go. Okay everybody so I've relocated out here now, it's throwing it down out there so uh, I'm not in the rain, I've got the garage door acting as a shelter. So what I've got here now is the first uh, square hoop uh, set up now and it's held in place by these magnets so I'm going to get a tack into this length of tube and this square section so I'm just going to hit it with a bit of anti-splatter matter just put that on there And now, using this magnet, let's pull all the way out, using this magnet I'm going to use it as a reference for giving me the dimensions from the bottom of the tube. And then I'll replicate that for the other three. So I'll just move that down. Make sure everything's Hunky dory, that feels good. So we're going to replicate that now with all the other three pieces. Okay everybody, so let's pull that in tight, it's a tiny bit out of square. That's completely missed. Right guys, let me tell you, this is really testing me. Uh, I'm enjoying it and I'm learning a lot, but uh, I might have said in some earlier scenes, I would definitely have not worked with uh, such a thin walled tube uh, if I'd have known and uh, yeah this this particular weld here 
was next to useless I completely missed the joint uh, and uh, I had to pull it apart and grind it back so let's have another go find the gloves I don't know if I was being a bit too ambitious you know jumping straight into a project like this uh, and I should have done lots lots more practicing but makes for a good video so get some more wire out so I can feel for where that join is I think I've blown through there now so I'll just let it cool down just got a little yeah blown through so I'll just have to plug that happy days Woo. okay everybody it's all uh, welded up like a badden uh, so what I'm going to do now is go around and feel uh, where I need to be adding more weld and filling any gaps ready for grinding uh, and I'm going to do that before I've got these metal tabs which I've yet to drill a hole for for the coach screws to go through and attach to the stool base so I'm just going to make sure that everything here is filled and plugged and just get lots of metal in to uh, beef it up it is <laughs> the framework from hell <laughs> hey okay everybody so here we are now and then just off camera what I did was just get some uh, got some pieces of I think some uh, a, a couple of beach blanks and also uh, if I just feel down here uh, in the base there in the bottom got some oak blanks that were just uh, hammered in and then sawn off uh, flush so obviously I'm going to get some feet uh, and attach them uh, in these oak plugs here but basically what I'm doing next is I've got these metal plates I'm going to attach the metal plates in place there uh, one, on e one on each internal corner and then I'm going to use these cut screws to go through the holes I'm going to drill in these to attach the uh, the stool top that I power carved so what I'm going to do now is just get set up uh, for drilling the holes that's what I'm going to do I didn't know where my head was then sorry okay everybody I've got all four brackets held securely in the in the vise and that's clamped securely to the table and everything's locked down nice and securely so uh, we'll be good to go so drill set on its slowest speed for maximum torque keep the heat down off we go nice and slow okay everybody so everything's welded up now and I use the term welded as loose as I can <laughs> so uh, yeah everything's welded and what I'm going to do now is, is just a, a few areas well there's about eight million areas uh, obviously I'm not going to do all but a few areas that I'm just going to fill 
just to improve the uh, the look of it and what I'm going to use is some milliput which I've just been kneading uh, for about half an hour felt like it anyway uh, so yes I'm going to just start uh, pushing this milliput into a few places and then when it's cured I'll be able to sand it back uh, and sand the whole piece by hand uh, before painting so I'll put this back on the tripod now uh, and I'll get on with this uh, Millie putting. Okay, everybody. So uh, welcome back. Another day. Uh, I've got about now, well, easily a week of work in this uh, in this project. So just to let you see, uh, I I got the uh, the verniers on this steel. I I, I didn't even know. Uh, the, the wall thickness of this tubing but I got the verniers on and it was uh, and then I got the verniers on the talking tape measure anyway cut long story short it's 1.5 mil and uh, yeah I, I definitely as a noob uh, I would be recommending something with a thicker wall thickness I mean the the, the purpose of this milliput which uh, I'm going to be sanding down by hand now with 120 grit and I'm going to sand the whole whole framework the whole purpose of this milliput is these like uh, little uh, porous perforations where you know I might have blown out a little bit and then I filled them with weld and plugged them uh, but then there was still some uh, imperfections so I just you know uh, here so yeah it's it's just a, a, a case now of smartening things up, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm doing my best. It's, uh, it's coming on, and I, I'm pleased with how it's feeling, and it's, it all holds together. And one thing that I did uh, realize is that when I was knocking in these uh, wooden plugs, and you know, giving giving them a right good whack, you know, the whole thing didn't just fracture and break and split and fall apart. So I think that bodes well for its structural integrity, which is pretty cool. So uh, I'll put this on the on the uh, on the tripod now, and we'll get some hand sanding done. Uh, I'll record a bit of it, and then uh, we can speed things up. But yeah, just some 120 grit. That seems to have enough cut to be getting rid of these, uh, and I'll be sanding everything down. So the tripod's here, just next to me. So. So, so we're going to just have a feel here and get going. Okay everybody, so <clears throat> I've finished sanding now uh, all over and I've sanded the little bits of filler down and sanded the whole whole framework and obviously uh, rounded the corners over so the paint sticks because uh, you need to knock the corners make sure there's no burrs nothing sharp so I've just got a uh, an industrial wipe here so I'm just going to wipe all the dust off and then we'll be actually ready for some paint Okay everybody, time for some paint.
Okay folks, the next step now that this has got some uh, black base coat on it and it's dried is this rust effect paint. So if I just feel over here, I'm going to apply it by one of these uh, round sponge applicators. Uh, so I'm going to daub it all over uh, the frame. Uh, just randomly, sporadically, see what sort of effect I get. I'll have to wait until uh, this is dry then. And then I'm going to add uh, this this patina, this sort of like verdigris patina. So I'm going for sort of like a, uh, an oxidised copper look in my head. Uh, and I picked these up at UKIS this year from the wood turner David Lowe. So uh, I'll be giving them a go. Uh, hopefully... I can uh, have some circles still remaining uh, with this sponge to sort of like uh, complement the circular shape of the stool top. So uh, let's get going with that then. Okay everybody, next step now, the <coughs> verdigris patina uh, and Nicola's just come back home from a meeting and she said uh, you can apply this by your finger so I'll get some on my finger there and it says to gently rub over so let's just Did feel like a bit too much there. So what I am actually going to do is use a brush and dry brush it on. Okay everybody, here it is now, uh, with the faint paint effect all done in its rusty gloriness and it's, the paint 
uh, adds an amazing texture uh, and it really does feel like uh, it's it's got that that rust feel dusty and craggy uh, and I've dry brushed some uh, verdigris uh, effect over the top so that's it now so what I'm going to do now is uh, get some lacquer on it okay everybody so it's had its uh, two quick coats of uh, acrylic sealer on there so I've got the the stool top on now and I've lined it up just so the perimeter of the stool top is just I mean I'm trying to feel my way around just kissing the corner it's a bit different here but uh, there's also very little wobble it's sitting quite flat on the top which is good uh, so what I really need to do now is uh, feel underneath where the holes are and then go through with my brad all and make a indentation and that's where I can drill pilot holes in for the coat screws so I'll just mark those holes now and then we'll reposition for some uh, pilot holes right see everybody these are the fixings I'm going to use, these coach screws, so they'll get a good bite in there and I can <coughs> uh, get a good fixing and snug them up really tight with the socket set. So I'm just feeling now for the first pilot hole, that's there. So. This is going straight into the heart wood as well. Feel for that one. And what I'll do now is I'll get these <coughs> tapped in with the socket set. Uh, just so it makes it easy when I'm trying to do it for real in a minute. Okay, so that's the four coach screws now located through their brackets and snugged up. I've not gone too tight. They've snugged up really well, uh, but uh, obviously I don't know how strong my welds are uh, with being a noob. But uh, yeah, there's been no cracks or creaks. So I'll give the, the stool a polish now and then uh, we'll show it you completed. Not long now, folks. Okay folks, here it is in all its chunky wooden glory. So, uh, I'll just get in close now. So, it's uh, 1.5 mil wall thickness steel tubing. Uh, and it's my first welding project uh, as, a, as, a, as a blind guy. So, uh, and this was my first power carving project. So, uh, my thoughts on it all, well, it's taken me from start to finish a month, but if you 
uh, just work that out as total hours spent it's probably about a week uh, so it's been a huge mental effort for me but uh, has it been hard no has it been challenging very uh, and I think it just goes to highlight that <clears throat> again you know uh, people with disabilities should not be written off uh, and you know that's that's why I'm doing these videos so uh, am I happy with it yes I am are the worlds good probably not uh, but that's going to come with lots of practice and uh, I would definitely not recommend using such a thin uh, steel to start off with so uh, with that in said folks I'm, uh, I'm going to sign off so don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe uh, and I'm going for a, a well earned cup of tea now so thanks everybody bye